Hi, this is Sue and Jack at Facts Etc. And we Hello. wanted to um, take the opportunity today to update our thoughts on breathing in relation to um, these corona times. Um, because even though we are obsessed with breathing and we talk about it a lot in relation to building core stability, it's obviously a really hot topic um, as people who are suffering worse from corona seem to have um, lung function problems. So what we want to do today is to go through some stuff that may help you ahead of catching it, um, if, if, if you happen to be one of the unfortunate ones that does, and or um, with your rehab if you've had an episode of um, corona or flu or anything. So um, the key thing we want to, to talk about today is, is the ability to breathe right down into the base of your lungs because the lungs are kind of pyramid shaped so two thirds of the lungs are down here kind of below the chest line. So what we really need to do is to get the breathing down here, which is something, you know, we talk about in relation to core stability, we talk about the diaphragm as a piston descending down, and when you can do that, inherently you can um, fill your lungs, the, 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 the bottom parts of your lungs as well. Um, so what we're really focusing on here, though, is this ability for, as the diaphragm descends, which is done by the lower ribs spreading out. So are your lower ribs mobile? Is your thorax flexible? Can you move through this area? So a really good thing that you can do ahead of trying to breathe um, deeply is to, to, to work in the thoracic and rib mobility. So we've done a, a morning mobility routine and that's got some, some back mobility exercises which can be really good. Plus, as Jack's gonna show you here, just some sort of basic rib stretches where he's stretching over and breathing in, but he's really focusing on breathing in here, not really through the lifting of the shoulder. The shoulder is up, but the breath is going sideways. And then you can just sort of do a couple, couple of um, twists as well, just to improve the, the mobility in that area. And maybe, you know, if you've got a ball or a roller, you can roll on your thoracic spine as well. But we just want to get this area moving. Um, the other thing that's really, really important when we're talking about this is the ability to breathe through your nose. Um, because the nasal breath does tend to push the air deeper into the lungs. It's also... The nose is, is it, it filters, it warms, it moistens the air, preparing it for the lungs, protecting your lungs. And again, at the moment, that is especially important. Now, some people, when I talk about nasal breathing, they say, well, I can't breathe through my nose. Well, in reality, the less you breathe through your nose, the less you're going to be able to do. But we do have a couple of things that, you can, that can help you with it. Um, there's these little nose strips that you can get at the pharmacy or online, which... Um, you can stick right on the bridge of a nose and we'll open it up just a little bit. There's also, <laughs> um, you can use inhalers, you can use the Vicks Vapor Rub, um, either just sniffing it or in the, the, the warm water and just breathing into that can help. There's also a little sort of mechanical exercise which Jack's gonna demonstrate of you just sort of pinch the bridge of your nose, you breathe all the way in, and then exhale all the way out through the nose. And then when you get to the end of the exhale, Jack is now going to nod slowly and firmly just as many times as he can before he feels the need to inhale again. It's when you, you start to feel the need to inhale, you don't have to, 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 to get into a sort of desperate oxygen deficit. And then when he does, he's gonna breathe in again through his nose. And you can repeat this three or four times, but each time you do it, it should clear out the, no the, the nostrils a little bit. Uh, another exercise you can do is just put the heel of your hand just, again, on the bridge of your nose and you're just pushing up. So it's pushing up through there and that's creating a little bit of space there. And again, breathe through your nose as you do it and it can create more, um, more, more freedom in that area. Okay, so now we've got the nose clean, clear. Um, there's one other benefit of uh, nasal breathing that we haven't really talked about, which is the uh, production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is, is really important in, in, in relation to your physiological health because it will dilate your blood vessels um, and improve your circulation. Um, and in relation to this in particular, uh, if you really feel problems breathing through your nose, you can do what's called mouth taping. Now, some people talk about 
getting a, 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 a big bit of tape that goes right across your mouth. But we don't think that's necessary. We've just got a small bit of sort of one centimeter micropore tape and that goes over your lips. Um, now that you can, you can use during your ex, doing exercise or you can use it at night because we really want to encourage nasal breathing at night. Anybody who shares a bed with you and says that you snore is going to be very grateful for this as well. Um, so it's a good habit to get into. The fact is that tape's really light, and so if you really, really needed to, to, to get the oxygen through your mouth, you would be able to open your mouth and it would not be a problem. So that's definitely something that's worth, worth giving a try. Anyway, I think now we're ready to go through the breathing exercise. So. It's kind of, the cueing is similar to the breathing that we give you lying on your back and lying on your front in that you're going to follow this, 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 the same setup. So it's neck long, chin tucked, tongue on the roof of the mouth to enable the, the nasal breathing. Now, as we said, said before, if your tongue is, does not naturally sit on the roof of your mouth, uh, a way you can work out how to do this is by doing the biggest grin possible, swallow, and where your tongue ends up is where it should be sitting. Then chest wide, ribs down. Now it's really important to keep the ribs down because the ribs down is that connection between the rib cage and the pelvis. Now Jack is doing this seated on a yoga cushion. You can just sit on a chair or however is comfortable for you, but you do want to be sitting nice and upright. He's now just gonna breathe. And the whole idea is, is, is really thinking of that piston of the diaphragm pushing down and the ribs spreading out. So you can just sit with your arms relaxed, or as Jack is about to do, your hands on your lower ribs, because also that proprioceptive feedback can connect your brain to that area to encourage that, that rib spread. Now, if you get a bit uncomfortable sitting with your arms in that position, you can, put, you can use a strap as well. So he just pulls that round, so you can sort of feel that, and then you just focus your brain on you are pushing that strap. Now you can see as Jack's sitting here, his shoulders are nice and relaxed. But now he's just gonna demonstrate for us just some ways that people think of breathing. <laughs> and you can see everything is working really, really hard, but it is not an efficient way of breath. In fact, it's hyperventilation and has a lot of negative effects. It don't wanna get too much into physiology, but it blows off too much carbon dioxide, which means that you actually can't release oxygen from the bloodstream into the cells. So it's the opposite of what you want to do. You want a nice, deep, but relaxed breathing. Now, to take it on one step further, up until now, Jack's been doing kind of a breath in for four, out for four. But what we really want to do is encourage slow breathing because that will create more gas exchange. The slower you breathe, the better the gas exchange because the longer the air is in the is in the lungs. So, um, for example, he can he can try a, a setup of breathing in for say four, and then just a pause at the top of the breath, and then a long slow exhale. Now, for some people initially, that exhale can only be about four, but if you can get it to eight, 10, or even 12, again, without it creating stress in your body, that's great. And then when you get to the end of that, can you hold your breath out for a few seconds before you start to breathe in? Because again, a lot of people get very panicked. They're trying to breathe in really, really fast, but just to try to slow this down, create relaxation. Obviously, if you are recovering from COVID and your lungs do not feel good, don't push this, just keep, keep breathing. But again, slowly, deeply, gently is going to get you a lot further than just trying to breathe in like this. Anyway, hopefully you'll find this helpful um, for you and obviously please feel free to, to spread this with all your sort of friends and family and um, we will be in touch with more videos and look forward to seeing you when we're able. Bye.